In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, we call to mind our sins. And we apologize to God, saying together, I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Mass today is being offered for the healing of Mildred Reckla, Amy Reckla, Lucas Valenjit, Eric Lopez, Norma Gaspar, Valachisi Macastro, Kelly Tapacho, Zaid Zavko, Michael Mello, Vernon Pingold, Robert Tardichila, Polina Quattro Chalki, Dennis Mark Rogers, Catherine Thompson, Teresa Oligario, Madeline Lee, Benam Fernandez, Chris Jane Gabon, Benjamin DeMello Kearns, Norman George Pitcher, Matthew Vacari, Maria Lilia Tienza. Isabel Martins, Aurelia Dolara, Olivia C. Joe, Nora Watson, Charan Popo, Chelsea Dixon, Gabriel Lazari, Kiana Tran, Carmen Pace, Jason Aguiar, Michael A. Gloria, Matthias, Gina Bellaton, Maria Morales, Agnes Wu, Menino Tomoto, Luis Medeiros. For the intentions of Margarila Castro, Eveline Richard, Benny Garces, Evelyn and Eugenio Cruz, Catherine Thompson and family, all volunteers in the parish. For the souls of Harold Faruja, Jerome Benoza, Leonardo Beton, Father Leon Bunyi, John, all souls in purgatory. We pray. O God, who adorned St. Timothy and Titus with apostolic virtues, grant through the intercession of them both that living justly and devoutly in this present age, we may merit to reach our heavenly homeland. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, who is God, second person of the Trinity, who lives and reigns with you, Father, and Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. First reading, 2 Timothy 1, 1 to 8. A reading from the letter of Paul to Timothy. From Paul, an apostle of Christ, Jesus, by the will of God, for the sake of the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God to the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did, when I remember you constantly in my prayers, night and day. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother, Lois, and your mother, Eunice. And now, I am sure, lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed then of the testimony about our Lord, or of me, his prisoner. But join with me in suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God. The word of the Lord. Be Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord 
bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations. Tell of his marvelous works among all the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory to his name. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. The, the world is firmly established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord sent me to bring good news to the poor and freedom to prisoners. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. From among the disciples, the Lord appointed 70 and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I'm sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide. For the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. My brothers and sisters, this is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. St. Timothy and St. Titus uh, feasts come after the conversion of St. Paul because the two men were disciples of St. Paul. And Paul's letter to them are found in the New Testament. Timothy was a close friend of Paul, working with Paul in his ministry, obviously mentioning prison today uh, and included uh, serving time in prison alongside his mentor Paul. Eventually, Timothy was uh, Bishop of Ephesus. He was stoned uh, to death in 67 for denouncing pagan worship. Paul named Titus Bishop of Crete. Uh, he's said to have delighted in the goodness of others and drew people to him. Titus is said to have died of old age. Timothy is the patron saint of stomach and intestinal disorders, while Titus is the patron saint of Crete. We need, in a deep way, to open ourselves up to be used by the Lord as a tool in his hand. This is part of what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. This world has to change. Most people are aware, we just finished yesterday the, pre, uh, the prayer of uh, unity amongst Christian churches. Uh, there's a lot of division in this world at micro levels, in families and then parishes and schools and macro levels in our culture, in our world, in our governments. There's a lot of confusion out there. And most of the time that confusion comes because people don't really know our Lord. Uh, that's where the confusion comes from. Where the real confusion comes from is they're totally convinced they do know the Lord. That's a problem. Um, and that's the brainwashing that happens today out there um, where people teach 30, 50, 60, 80 percent of the Lord, uh, but not 100 percent. And the result is that there are tremendous gaps in people's learning. And those gaps sometimes are fundamental in terms of areas of forgiveness, um, areas of evangelization. 
areas of obligations to the poor, uh, like major gaps. We've just started our marriage course. Uh, it'll be every Friday. And we are trying to get across to these couples who are at the very beginning of their journey uh, together as a couple that's going to be getting married in 2023, some of them 2024. You have to understand where the bar is because the bar is low and you have to raise the bar. That is the expectation that you will raise the bar in this marriage beyond what your parents gave you, what your school taught you, what your priests instructed you in. You have to go beyond these people. Uh, you have baggage entering this marriage, physical, mental, spiritual. You have to manage this baggage, name it, claim it, manage it. There are two couples that are teaching the course who I trust, I've known them for many years. And I'm also part of the teaching team. And we began the first class by mentioning our baggage, our issues that we struggle and that we deal with and that we have to work with in order to have God the Holy Spirit use us to be a tool in God's hands. It is essential that we help people overcome their limitations. Um, because there's so many limitations out there. Uh, people really don't know who the Lord is. You know, whenever anyone says to me, I had to laugh on the weekend, somebody approached me and, and said, you know, Father, I'm very upset. You know, my, my child has left the Catholic faith. Um, and, you know, I, I put them in Catholic school. Uh, they were altar servers at the Mass. And now that's it. Uh, they haven't seen the inside of the church in years. Um, and, you know, and, and they were so Catholic. And I corrected the person and I said to them, well, you know, you might want to reconsider that statement. Um, you know, your child has been raised in Canada, was pumped through the Catholic school system, was pumped through the Catholic church sacramental system. So between the family system, the school system and the church system, I would not say that they've abandoned the faith. I'm debating whether they ever knew the faith, given the failure of the systems that you put them through. Like, I think the systems have failed them, and they need more than anything else to come to know him. And the worst part of it is, and I understand, you know, they're like 30 years old, 32 years old, and they've been put through all these systems. So they've concluded, I'm Catholic. Of course, I'm, I, I know the religion, of course. I, and I said to this person, I bet if I gave them a grade three test on the Bible, they would fail. I bet if I gave them a grade three test on the catechism, they would fail. I bet you if I gave them a grade three test on details of what the Lord expects of us, his commandments, they would fail. So if they can't pass a grade three test, because I know I've done this with many, many people, I've said this to you before, you know, these wannabe Catholic school teachers come to me for a letter and I don't go PhD on them, I go grade three. You know, Ten commandments, one to ten in order. They don't know them. They don't know them. Like 98% of wannabe Catholic school teachers don't know the Ten Commandments, one to ten in order. That indicates a failure in our system. Not them. They're poor victims of the failed system. It's the system that has failed them and ultimately has not given them a sense of what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. They are not failures. The system failed them. And so when this parent said to me, you know, my kid has dumped the religion, I said to them, I doubt that your kid knows our religion. They don't know. Um, you know, they think they know. Just like when these teachers come to me, you know, I always begin by asking, so are you a practicing Catholic? Yes. Do you know our Catholic religion? Yes. Are, you know, are you ready to enter a classroom to teach our religion? Yes. And then they don't know the Ten Commandments. You see what I mean? You, you see what I mean? Like, yes, yes, yes. 
and then they don't know the Ten Commandments. Well, quite obviously the answer is no, no, no. But they're convinced. See, it's the brainwashing that they've been put under. That they think they know. They're not lying to me. They actually think they know Jesus Christ. They're convinced. Yes, yes, yes. They will say yes. And then they don't know the most basic fundamentals of our faith, of our catechism. They're, again, the system is a failure. And Paul would freak, freak. Timothy and Titus would freak if you saw the current state of our church today. We're in bad shape, you know? I said that to somebody recently, the father, you're a pessimist. I go, well, 95% of the kids have dumped us by grade 12. I don't call that pessimism. I, I, I call that facing facts. You're in dream, dream land if you're disagreeing with me. Like you're in some state of, you know, marijuana-induced euphoria. Like you are confused. I live this day after day after day after day. You're confused. You think it's okay. It's not okay. As my mother used to say, she's a brock. The systems, not just, you know, the school or the church or the culture, but all the systems, broke, broken. They need to be fixed. And we need to fix them. And that's our function as disciples of Jesus Christ, who know him. We have to fix the system. Because again, I feel for these young people. You know, they think they know. They think they've left the faith. They don't even know the faith. How can you leave something you don't know? You can't, you know? They're just confused, so confused. They're so confused. And like I said, you can prove that easily by just giving them a grade three test. If a full adult cannot pass a grade three test, the system is a failure. Oh, I'm sorry, but like, if you did that with anyone else in any area, mathematics, science, geography, history, and they failed the grade three test, you would say, whatever education system they got pumped through, failed them. Religion is no different. It's a system, they get pumped through a system, and by the end, it's supposed to be a functional entity called a mature disciple of Jesus Christ. It's not. It's not a mature disciple of Jesus Christ. You know, it may look like a toaster. You can plug it in like a toaster, but when you pull the handle down, the heating elements don't heat up. So it's a non-functional toaster. I don't know. That's the analogy I've used in the past. It looks like one, but don't work. She's a block. And that's what most Catholics are out there. Broken. Um, because, so again, we have hope. Uh, they're in the marriage course. Uh, I have baptism classes coming up. Um, there's hope that I can get them to take another look, get them to name, claim, manage their baggage, that I can get them to understand these things so that they don't go around, you know, yes, 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 when the actual answer is no, no, no. Uh, that's the hope I have. Uh, you know, that's, that's kind of the hope that I live on is the hope that they'll wake up to reality and not live in Ganjarella, marijuana-induced fake land that most Catholics are living in. I've had people challenge me in the past. Oh no, Father, that's not true. Oh, okay, um, pick a school, pick a class. 
I'll go into whatever school you want, whatever class you want, and I'll give them a grade three test. Are you willing to accept that? Uh, 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 exactly. Don't, yeah, don't, like, you can do it with others, but not with me. No, no, I've been around for too long. You can't mess with people like me. Um, I know issues of broke. Don't be coming to me in your little fantasy land saying, no, it's not. Limited. Bless you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we all, uh, the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this one, we want you to share the divinity of Christ, who humble himself to share in our humanity. Bless you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. We had um, feedback from our First Communion people yesterday. Vlad and I met with the First Communion teachers, and um, they just had their first class on Saturday with the kids. And I said to the teachers, any surprises? And they said, Father, so many of them don't know how to make the sign of the cross. They're seven years old. Seven years old. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, which we bring in celebration of Saints Timothy and Titus, and in your kindness render us fully acceptable by giving us sincerity of heart. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you are praised in the company of your saints, and in crowning their merits, you crown your own gifts. By their way of life, you offer us an example. By communion with them, you give us companionship. By the intercession of the saints, sure support. So that encouraged by so great a cloud of witnesses, we may run as victors in the race before us and win with them the imperishable crown of glory through Christ our Lord. And so with the angels and archangels, with a great multitude of saints, especially Timothy and Titus, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we now acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Tom Collins, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died in your mercy, in a special way, Harold Ferrugia, Jerome Benoza, Leonardo Beton, Father Leon Bugni, John, all souls in purgatory. 
Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. We pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us offer each other now. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring you to everlasting life. As I mentioned, it, is it worth a good meditation? Because I've meditated on it a lot. It's not the fact that they don't know that is the problem. That is not the fact. That's not the main problem. The main problem is how convinced they are before they're tested that they do know. It's the three yeses that are the real sad part. Not that they don't know. It's that they're convinced that they do know. Are you Catholic? Yes. No, you're not. <laughs> Are you ready to teach? Yes. No, you're not. So, again, it's just so sad that they're so brainwashed by the system that and I can understand it. You got 14 years of Catholic school, years. You, you've got years of sacramental preparation in the church. You would think that if the system, but again, they don't know the system's a failure because that I know of, I'm one of the few people that use this language. Most people skirt around it. So they're afraid of consequences. We live in Canada. What consequences are there going to be? What consequences are there going to be in Canada? So again, meditate on that. 
because if you know, it's worth a good meditation, how convinced they are that the system is working. That's the scariest part of all this, is that they're convinced. Well, kid, of course kids by grade two know how to make the sign of the cross. No, they don't. No. Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received, O Lord our God, nourish in us that faith taught by the preaching of the apostles and kept safe by the laborers of St. Timothy and Titus. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve God and each other. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us. And after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Thank you all for coming. God bless you all. Have a lovely day. Careful if you're going outside not to slip.